Call the meeting to order. We have five board members present. We thought we were going to have another one in a few minutes. There might be one running a minute late. I'm going to ask everyone to uh, stand for the pledge to the flag, the American flag and the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Honor the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to the Texas, one state, under God, one and indivisible. Before we go into public forum, I just want to thank admin for our reception. This is uh, January is school board trustee appreciation month and we're very thankful for all the, the sign and basket from the high school and the reception outside. Thank you very much. We're going to begin our public forum. Number one. A uh, card is Rodrigo Amaya. Misinformation from superintendent about something speech. Free speech, ma'am. Free speech. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you, trustees. Um, last time I was here, I was uh, interrupted repeatedly by the superintendent and some of y'all up here. And uh, I don't know how well versed y'all are in free speech, but I did a lot of research since the last time I was here about the. Uh, U.S. Supreme Court and their position, the, they consider the public system, school system, the cradle of democracy. And this is the one place where you come up here, and if we feel like it, we can say your name all we want. You can say my name. You can't say their name. Okay. You can say my name all you want, So not the staff. For you to be interrupting me, you know, I don't know how much of an attorney you are with your Ph.D., but, you know, I have a big problem with it. And I want you to know that, that if you don't know what you're telling me, sir, you don't need to be interrupted. Say, these are my three minutes. to me, sir. These are my three Nobody minutes. Nobody on the staff. Okay. So is that allowed, ma'am, for him to be? You signed a card that says that. I signed a card that says what? No. For him to be engaging. Is that proper uh, court, uh, etiquette for, for us here? Is yes. that proper? Yes. He's got a PhD. He needs to be the example. I would read the blue card. The blue card says that you can't mention... Oh, okay. Staff members. We have to protect our, our staff members. If really? You have, yes, absolutely. Okay. Uh, I, I really Thank would appreciate I really would appreciate some kind of legal uh, document to tell me that. That way I can clear it up with the folks that I deal with. You know, yeah, you can bring them if you want. Yeah, give, you know. give me a copy of the blue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and the other thing is, trustees, I, I don't know why y'all uh, continue to allow him to respond with some of the most generic responses when y'all ask questions. I know Ms. Housley asked something last time and the superintendent was just kind of like, well, it's, it's there or it's not there. That's not going to be good enough. You know, we have to have someone who's going to be a leader, you know, all the time. These generic responses that are very shallow, I mean, how are we supposed to, you know, leave here knowing that y'all have y'all our, our, our children's interests a priority? You know, when the superintendent is not a good example. You know, so we got to do better, and it's y'all's responsibility. You know, nothing has improved. If you go look at these grades that Mr. Lyons looks into, nothing has improved as far as academics. What is he still doing here? Y'all need to start really taking that seriously because if he's not doing the job, y'all need to start looking around for someone that's going to be uh, making sure that our, our children are being taught and college ready when they leave here. Okay? Thank you. Have a great evening. Thank you. Thank you. Second, we have Olivia Grabowski. I hope I pronounced it correctly. She's going to give us a public comment on bullying. Good evening, school board. My name is Olivia Grabowski. Let me start by saying that I love Miller, and I'm a proud sixth grader that's in dance, do language, athletics, and SAC. I have always felt heard and supported. Recently, something happened, and I felt like I needed to speak up. A very close friend of mine had to miss school due to health reasons. When she came back, she had to use a walker and a wheelchair to help her get around. 
Myself and others would help her, and I thought everything was fine. But it wasn't. She was being bullied due to her disability, and bullying on any front is just wrong. As a result of the bullying and threats against her, she was withdrawn from school. I have been taught and believe that it is a basic human right to feel safe at school. And in this case, sadly, it feels like the bullies won. We lost a student who made us a better school, district, and community. I don't have all the answers, but I know that teaching kindness and human decency is just as important or more important than academics and test scores. I have seen what we can do as a district when we put our minds to it. We cannot afford to lose more students to bullying. My little sister and all the generations after us deserve better. I look forward to working with you to address this serious issue of bullying in any way I can. Thank you for your time, attention, and future work on this important issue. Thank you, Elizabeth. I mean, Olivia. Olivia, 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 thank you. I'm sorry, it was on the next one. Elizabeth Amaya <coughs> to address mid year evaluation of superintendent and mid year academic update. Hello. Um, I want to just talk a little bit about the uh, agenda item regarding uh, the formative mid year evaluation of the superintendent. Thank you. Um, currently, we have three schools, San Marcos High Thank School, you. Good Night at Middle School, and Miller Middle School that since that are currently um, at a rating of, well, actually, this year, uh, both Miller and Good Night Middle School are not even rated because their grades are so low, 65 and a 67. So rated a D, low D. We have San Marcos High School that is rated a C as well, 78. I don't understand every, every time we come to, come to um, uh, the school board meeting, we use verbiage such as uh, committed to all students performing at or above grade level, establishing a rigorous uh, academic culture, um, a culture of high expectations. We're not getting anywhere. Um, it looks like we're just going further and further down. Uh, I, I don't understand what's going on. Um, our overall school rating for SMCISD is a 78. We can do better than that. I'm, I'm not sure with all these core, you know, rigorous, you know, plans you have, nothing seems to be working. So um, I just want to find out what, 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 what are the teachers doing. I know we've gave stipends and raises to teachers to keep them because we have good teachers working in the district, but I don't see that the students are learning anything or, or the scores are, are coming up. So just wanted to see, to let you know that I don't think the superintendent is doing a good job. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Dan Lyon. Uh, thank you, Madam President and board members. Um, I don't have a lot more to say than the last two speakers have said. I'll, uh, I know where Elizabeth and Rodrigo got their information from, and by prior arrangement, I won't quote schooldigger.com. I won't quote S-C-H-O-O-L-D-I-G-E-R dot C-O-M. But I'll let y'all do uh, look at it if you want to. Anyway, <clears throat> as you can see by the graph you've got, uh, things have not improved over the past uh, six to seven years. Being politically correct is, is wonderful, but being politi politically correct will not help our students. It won't help the students of any race. We need to equip our students for a really rough world out there. They need to have technical education. They, at a bare minimum, they need to know how to read and write, and they need to 
be able to do basic math. And let's face it, we're graduating some people that don't know how to do that. And that's inexcusable for the amount of money I pay for school taxes, and I don't even have any children in the district, uh, or any children for that matter, but it's, it's crazy that we can't do better than this. We've got people in third world countries that are basically taking the jobs that our students should be taking because they're more proficient in the sciences and math than high school graduates. They get to college, they have to take remedial courses because high school has not prepared them for a college environment. Um, you know, last time I was here, we passed this brave space thing and I said, this was nebulous nonsense. I think it's actually worse because I looked at some of these uh, brave space government framework and that was in the newspaper anyway says that the trans person is not the problem brave spaces and structural competence is educative tools for trans justice and social work uh, safe spaces or brave safe spaces or brave spaces re-envisioning practical theology and transformative learning theory now, I was told that schools are not supposed to be teaching religion, but yet here it is. Y'all approved of it. So let's get back to basics. And I don't believe the superintendent deserves a raise. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Lyon. We'll move on to the superintendent's report. Uh, Mr. Odom. As Mr. Odom comes up, these are the students we want to recognize that aren't in the current accountability system right now. But as a board, we value the things that these young men and young women do to represent our community. So they get to take the front row. Uh, Dr. Gargadona, members of the board, I'm CJ Odom. I'm the CT coordinator for the district. And we have some terrific CTE students that we want to introduce you to tonight. We're excited to recognize this group of students from our Taffy organization, that is the T Texas Association of Future Educators. These CT students have competed at the Area 3 Taffy Conference in December, and we are proud to announce that, that we had 12 individuals advance to the state championship in nine different competitions. And so these students will move on to compete at the State Teach Tomorrow Summit in March. And thanks to some new initiatives from our Human Resources Department, we are really looking forward to having some of these students and be our, be our part of our teaching staff at SMCISD in the years to come. So we're really excited about that. Unfortunately, on a Tuesday night, we did have a good number of our students off at a rehearsal for the Little Mermaid or a basketball game. But for these four, we want to recognize them. First, let me let you hear the names of the students that were not able to join us tonight, but we're just as proud of them. And that is Abby Calkins, Kai Lee, Kaya Jensen, Lila Langer, Savannah Magianis, Xavion Harris, Chase Clark, and Sadie Helgeson. So we appreciate them and, and ex excited about what they did. Uh, some of the events that they competed in were interactive bulletin board for elementary, interactive bulletin board for high school, as well as job interview and teacher created materials at the elementary level. Again, these students are all future educators, so they're working in a variety of ways to create materials and lesson plans and interactive materials that they can use from elementary to secondary. We actually partner with our elementary and middle schools for these students to go and work with our students and get that first direct hands-on learning so it's really exciting so for the four that are up here we'll have you just kind of wave so we let you know who they are first we have Carmen Blay she competed in, she is advancing in chapter yearbook as well as ethical dilemma at the varsity level we also have Georgia Riccio she is moving on in ethical dilemma at the junior varsity level as well as children's literature we also have Axel Franks he will be moving on in researching learning challenges as well as Colton Hill who is also moving on in researching learning challenges. So we appreciate the Taffy students. We wish them good luck at state competition and appreciate them for all they're doing to make Rattler Nation proud.
Mr. Underwood. Good evening, President Cantu, members of the board, and Superintendent Cardona. Uh, first, I'd like to thank, take this moment first to thank the Board of Trustees for your service to this community and by serving as a member of this board and for the volunteer hours that you spend every month in preparation. And I know this is Board Appreciation Month, so I just want to say thank you first. Tonight, we're going to begin first by recognizing some fine arts programs, uh, beginning with the Miller Middle School Band. So I'm going to turn it over to Danny Maldonado and Hector Ramirez, the directors. Good evening, everyone. I'm, I'm Danny Maldonado. To my right is Mr. Hector Ramirez. So we're here to represent the Miller Band Program. We're very proud of a lot of the, uh, a lot of the events that we get to do between our wind ensemble, symphonic band, and especially our jazz band. It gets very popular. Um, but tonight, we're recognizing a few of our students. So we had four students advance through to the region, uh, region competition in November, where all these people in the middle school level learn the same piece of music and get graded by blind judges. And we had four, two couldn't make it here today, but they are Finn Freitas on trombone, Riley Civile on trumpet, and here with us today we have Alvin Close on trumpet, and Emily Vijado actually made the top band in all the North San Antonio and down through here. So if we could recognize them, Woo! we're very proud of them. <laughs> Welcome y'all back around the counter so y'all can take a picture of them. And next, I'm going to turn it over to retired Sergeant Chantel Travis, and who will be recognizing students within the 921st Junior ROTC program. While we're waiting on the next one, I want to say I had the privilege of listening and watching the Miller Band, their Christmas show, and I really enjoyed it. I think I visited with one of the band directors up there. That's a big trophy. Huh? Busy. Good afternoon, everybody. I am retired Master Sergeant Shante Travis. I'm here representing Texas 921. And uh, we've got some wonderful young people in front of you here today. I'm going to make this as quick as I can. All right, we did a lot of things this fall. The fall was a, a very busy time for us, and they love it, right? Look at those faces. <laughs> <laughs> they enjoyed it. They get up early. Um, you know, we have practices on Tuesday, Thursday mornings. They're here early, they stay late, they're practicing all the time. Color guards, we're performing, doing different things throughout the, you know, the, um, the community and everything. So these young people, um, the first ones I'm going to recognize are, there was a Texas uh, IT symposium, Texas State I University IT symposium, and we had of uh, the three, we had three students from San Marcos High School. Uh, we had, uh, third place was, Caden Pena, who was not, wasn't able here, to be here tonight because he was working. Um, he took third place in PCN support. In second place, we had um, Cadet Sebastian Hernandez, who took second place. He is a first year cadet. And in first place, we had uh, for Microsoft uh, Access and Excel, Cadet Miguel Hernandez. And I wanted to give them the certificate here. students, they spend a lot of time, uh, I don't know if anybody knows about uh, Microsoft, Excel, Cisco, Ubuntu, things like that, but um, they spend a lot of time with that. So that leads me to the next, uh, next category. We had the National Cybersecurity Cyber Patriot Competition. And this year we had a all-girls team uh, consisted of the Vipers, and we have four of the five here today. One that couldn't be here is Cadet Lauren Gabrian. She wasn't able to be here, but the others in that team are um, from on your right, yeah, you're right. That would be Cadet um, Lopez. Then we have Cadet, uh, lost, I lost your name. I'm just messing with you, George. <laughs> <laughs> then we have our core commander who is Michaela Rodriguez, Cadet Rodriguez. And then we have Natalie Liao, 
So they were all a part of the all girls team. And I don't know if you know about computers and stuff, but we don't have enough women in that field. Amen. So we were proud to have our all girls team and they made it to the top. They were in the top uh, category, which is platinum. And they were also in the top 10% in the nation. So there were 19,000, there were 5,000 teams and there were 19,000 participants. These young ladies made it to the top 10%. So I think that's some cool. Woo! talk to you about what they are experts at because they love this stuff <laughs> but this is our future and we're excited that we have one of you know the, the team here in San Marcos and we're just excited so we're you know help, hoping that we're going to grow and grow and grow so um, and uh, the let's see what else did we do the last thing that we did and I'm going to get out of your way was again it was a very busy semester and we always do the San Marcos Veterans Day Parade well, this year we were approached by the, uh, uh, what were they, um, let me look at it. I get excited about it, Seguin. <laughs> Seguin, uh, the American Legion. They approached us and asked if we would lead their parade in Seguin. So that was different. Leading Seguin, we're San Marcos, but we're leading Seguin. So we, of course, we had to say yes. And we were so honored. And if you look up front, the hardware we took first place. We had no idea there was a competition, but we took first place. Woo! So that, I'm going to stop now because I could talk all day about these young people, but they are doing some awesome work down there, um, it, you know, with Cyber Patriot, just the community in general. We love serving the community. So of course we're available, we hope, mm -hmm. always for you guys to do whatever we need to do for you guys. But we love and we enjoy, and with our support from our wonderful principal, Ryan, right there, she always backs us here, and Mr. Cardona. So we appreciate you guys. And that's all I'm gonna say about these wonderful people, but thank you so thank much. You. So, so one more. All right, we welcome you back around one more time. Sergeant Travis is being shy, so. That's the last of the fine arts recognitions for tonight also, but still, again, one more time to our board, thank you very much for your service and your hours of volunteering each month and for all, all of our students and our staff. One shameless plug that I just, I can't walk away without doing, the 19th, starting Thursday through Sunday, the uh, first ever all fine arts team musical here will be taking place at our Performing Arts Center. Um, look on our website for smcisd.net. There's banners there. You can get your tickets. You can pick your seat. And so it's, that's exactly what you'll have to pick your seat. They're only $10 and want to encourage you all to be a part of that, to be present, to see that. It's going to be a fantastic show. Five performances in four days, January 19th to the 22nd. And so the whole community, of course, is invited to, to be a part of that as well. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. We've got some great students here. <laughs> We're now going to a closed session as authorized by Section 551.074 of the Texas Government Code. Discussion regarding San Marcos High School principal. Discussion regarding formative mid-year evaluation of the superintendent of schools.
on to the reports and information. On number 8A, academic update, mid-year academic update. Good evening, President Cantu, members of the board, Dr. Cardona. Thank you so much for having me here this evening to update you all. This presentation tonight is really just focused on principal coaching and support for the first semester. First, I just would like to review with everyone the core commitments for San Marcos CISD. This is really what our work is grounded in, and it's what I focus on with all of the campus principals. The next area, and I know you all have seen this numerous times before, is the effective schools framework. This particular year with the principals, I really have focused on lever one, which is strong school leadership and planning, lever three, positive school culture, and lever five, effective instruction. So I wanna dive down a little bit into the three levers and kind of talk about what my support looks like with campus principals. The first lever, lever one, is leadership growth and development. <clears throat> this particular year, I work with all of the campus principals weekly and we have power meetings. The power meetings really are driven by the needs of the campus principal. It looks different for every single, every single campus. And really, I'm just there to offer coaching, support, and guidance. We always have to-dos for the following week for the principal and myself. The power meetings offer an opportunity for me to take back information to the Office of Academics and to be able to better support campuses. We also have monthly principal and assistant principal leadership collaboratives. We also have a principal playbook. Really, a playbook is an organizational tool to help campus principals be better organized for the year, focusing on school culture, focusing on their schedule, focusing on all the various things that it takes to manage a school. And then the last thing that we also have is coaching guidance. And coaching looks different, I'll be honest, depending on the principal, how experienced the principal is, challenges that a campus may have, and what support a campus principal needs. The second lever that I focus on is dealing with school culture. We do have a lot of new assistant principals in our district, and so working with a new assistant principal team looks different than working with an experienced assistant principal team. So on some campuses, we look at routines, we look at arrival, we look at dismissal, we look at lunch. Whereas on other campuses, we're focusing on PBIS and the supports that we offer students. Regardless of the experience level of the principal, I work with them on teacher and student supports and how we can retain our teachers. We wanna make sure that we have our quality teachers in the classroom year after year and they don't leave to go to another district. The last thing this year I really have focused on in the first semester is dealing with instruction. This year we have implemented high quality instructional materials at both elementary and also at the middle school. And so I work very closely with the curriculum directors to really help be a voice not only for the campus principal, but also for the directors. So I will go and do observations with the principal. I will work with the assistant principals. I can go in and help with the um, campus instructional specialist, really just looking at how we can best support our teachers in the classroom. Some of the other things I have worked on with Tier 1 instruction include sitting in professional learning communities, providing feedback for principals on how to better coach their teachers, their assistant principals, and also their curriculum instructional specialists. And last but not least is just really how to support a teacher with the challenges of implementing a new curriculum. Having a new curriculum in both math and also in reading is very challenging. And so just to make sure that the principal is there to offer the support needed so a teacher can be successful. These are the three main areas that I have focused on the first semester. So this really is just a reflection of all the hard work that we have done this year. And I have to say, it's been a privilege to work with all of our principals and assistant principals. They do an amazing job and they give their all day in and day out. And so I wanted you to see not just by my words, but by pictures. These are some of the pictures that we've done throughout the year. This year we focused on them celebrating each other, also being vulnerable, telling their story, listening and growing and learning from each other and becoming better so that they can impact all students in the classroom. So these are some of the great things that we've done this year. 
Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Questions? I was curious, when you have your principal and vice principal meetings, are those combined or do you separate vice principals in one group and principals in the other? No. Um, we always have the principal meeting first. Normally it's on a Thursday. And then that is a, a full day. That includes a professional learning community. We also have a principal spotlight where a principal um, teaches or um, discusses something they're doing really well on their campus. We also have guest speakers from outside of the organization come in and talk about leadership development. Then what we do is we mirror that for assistant principals. Today was our assistant principal professional learning community. We do have two sessions it looks a little different a.m. and p.m. just because you can't have all of the secondary princi assistant principals off but we make sure um, that they are hearing the same things things they need as an assistant principal and things that they need to become the next principal of a campus um, so we make sure that they hear some of the things and then they have things that are relevant to their position thank you anyone else thank you very much thank you <coughs> Operations update. So good evening, Board President Cantu, Board of Trustees, Dr. Cardona. Tonight's operations update, I wanted to take this time to provide y'all an update on the facility assessment and long range planning project. Um, I've asked Perkins and Will, the design firm that the district selected to do this project, to uh, come in and share a couple of slides with us and some activity that's been going on. So, Coleman Uresti and Jonathan Losey are with Perkins and Will. Thank you very much uh, for letting us be here tonight. And I just want to say thank you very much for continuing the, the relationship that you have had with us uh, for the past years. Um, I think we had a very successful past uh, bond. And as we go into this long range plan, um, we're going to use a lot of those same tools that we use to be able to gather information from all, everybody that uses the campus um, and, and be able to put that together for um, the committee or the public committee to be able to um, let them understand how the, the district works, uh, but also um, the needs that they have for the next 10, 15 years. Uh, so let me just jump. So I just want to start with this uh, planning schedule. It kind of gives you an idea of, of what's going on. Uh, we were hired uh, again last week, and since then we have been off and running. Uh, we have met with uh, each campus already. We've met with each maintenance uh, or each principal at each campus, the maintenance teams. Um, we've met with curriculum. Uh, so we're, we're gathering all that information together right now so that we can have it in one location. Um, and then, so what we'll do is once we finish gathering all the information, we're gonna start to look at how that affects capacity, how that affects the facilities, um, and then what needs are starting to come to the top, right? And, and so right now we're just gathering all the information. We're gonna start adding, or getting a better understanding of the priorities that the district sees. Um, so when we go out and look at a facility, uh, we're looking at all the light fixtures, we're looking at the air conditioning units, we're looking at those, those items and we're saying, is this a priority that could be handled um, you know, in the maintenance plan th through the next five years or how, how do we have to handle some of these larger items, uh, for example, like a R22 replacement or some of those things. So we're gathering all the information for our meeting on Thursday with the community. Um, I'll just jump to this slide. Um, on, on the 19th to talk about the facilities assessments. And to start this meeting off, we're gonna uh, do a tour of Rodriguez Elementary School to let everybody understand this is, this is some of our schools, this is how we work. Uh, the principal is going to be leading that tour. And it just helps open up everybody's eyes. Usually a lot of the public don't get to go into the facilities or, or the schools, right? They're, they're driving up, dropping the kid off, and then they're leaving. And so this is gonna open up those opportunities uh, at this meeting and the next meeting to do some uh, tours to understand uh, what's going on at school. So um, in, our, in our following meeting, after we have, uh, in the previous meeting, we talked about the financials uh, of the district. Uh, we talked about the educational vision and we talked about that vision for success, right? That, that we have. So we're informing the community We've been, we're informing them again at this next meeting on Thursday, 
and then next week we're going to start to talk about how do we get to the next step um, in this long-range facilities plan. What are the needs? How do we start to plan out when, when these items happen? So um, after that, we're going to make sure it's a very involved uh, system. So we're, we're sitting in groups. We're talking about needs with the community. They're coming back to us and telling us these are the things that we see are important. Um, we need to look into this deeper and then we're basically acting as that secretary for them saying, okay, we'll, we'll reorder this and we see these proposals and then we're going to come up with probably five or six options, right? We have quite a few people in the room uh, from the community there so they'll be able to help guide that uh, direction and we'll just kind of keep notes and keep us going in the right direction. Um, after that, uh, the community members will all come together. They're going to say, this is the best plan for us. Uh, we'd like to go to the board and, and present that plan um, on how we would like the district facilities to look in the next, uh, you know, five to ten years. And, and then <coughs> one of the big things, I think, just like uh, our last long-range plan, we can't just look at the physical, right? We have to have that educational side. And I think that's why we spend so much time with our principals to make sure we understand how they're using the buildings. We look at each individual classroom going, okay, this is how this is coming together. How, do you, how much community uh, support do you have? Do we need to have special spaces for them? Because it's not just a curriculum, right? Our kiddos need that emotional support. They need those things. So we have to make sure that we have all the spaces for them. So we do a deep dive, not just from, oh, that's a pretty ceiling. We do it from the educational side as well. And then that financial assessment comes in and says, okay, now we understand this is the plan. How do we start to, to move forward and make implement that plan? So that's kind of just a brief overview. Um, I do want to reiterate, you know, the last uh, week and a half, we have been uh, out on every single campus meeting. Um, thank you to staff. I mean, it's been, they're like, I'm trying to get back into school mode, guys. I just got back from Christmas break, uh, but everybody sat down with us. We have, we've d dove into it quite a bit of information with them, and we're able to gather that and put it all together for our meeting on Thursday. Did you have any questions? Questions, anybody? I thought we I, had a really good uh, community meeting. Ms. Um, Diapando was there. I was there. Uh, who was the third one? Oh, and, and Ms. Mejia was there. So it was a pretty good turnout that we had for our meeting. I, I did have a question. Yes. Um, so I think we've all acknowledged that this is a very aggressive timeline to get this facility assessment done and to get something on a potential ballot initiative. So I wanted to ask you, in your experience leading these kinds of things, um, what if decisions are made in this timeline that are not put on a bond initiative this year are they able to be used at, an, at another time those kinds of decisions those kinds of recommendations are they still valid yes i i think with the information we're going to have it all documented so that way everything is in one place all your priorities that are we're listing everything out priority one priority two priority three you'll have that list what happens is, I mean, the financial portions will mm -hmm. change, right? They will. Just like we've seen the inflation um, throughout this last year, right? Um, so we're, you're able to go through and update that as, as, as needed. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else? Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, on C was supposed to be an update, but I understand we don't have Mr. Rios on the and Zoom, so we'll move on to number nine, approval of consent agenda items, approval of minutes for regular scheduled board meeting on December 12th and special board meeting on January 9th. I make a motion that we approve. Do I hear a second? I'll second. Motion by Mr. Shanks and second by Ms. Mejia that we approve the minutes for December 12th and for January 9th. Questions or comments? All in favor? Six, zero. Sorry. It passed. B, consider approval of awarded contract for fence and gate project for SMCISD campuses. Hmm? Yeah. <coughs> we have a motion. 
Oh, so, so. I move that we approve the award contract for fence and gate projects for SMCISD campuses. Moved by Ms. Halsey, seconded by Dr. Salmi. Any questions or discussion? All in favor, please raise your hand. Six, zero, passes. Items for action, operations, discussion and possible action to select the rank of competitive sealed proposals for the administration building project. So good evening, Doyle. board. Uh, I just said Mr. Doyle. Sure. Uh, on January, uh, January 4th of 23, the administration accepted uh, cons competitive sealed proposals for the new administration office uh, project. Uh, there was a committee uh, consisting of five people, myself, Bernie Sandoval, Richard Duval, uh, Doug Wozniak, and Lisa Cordova, who independently evaluated uh, the rank and ranked each proposal. Uh, you'll see the, the ranking detail on page 18 of your board book. The highest ranked company was Noble General Contractor, LLC, based on the criteria and the weight uh, that are attached. Finally, the administration recommends acceptance of all alternates as well. So based on the recommendation, we propose that the board approve the rank of proposed contractors for the new administration office building project and accept all alternates. Ms. Yapando. Um, the very last item on that uh, is a minus 30,000. I'm sorry. Uh, the very on uh, noble contractors? Yes, ma'am. The last item is a minus? Yes, ma'am. And does that mean they don't do the work? No, it's a deduct in the bid, meaning that in lieu of the uh, heavy grade pavement, uh, they're, they're bidding essentially at medium duty pavement. Again, all of all the uh, alternates were recommended by our our um, architect, and so what they're saying is they'll do that medium paving. So, so it comes off the total cost. It's a minus Ms. of Halsey, 30. you have your hand up. Yeah, what's the contingency fund? What's the contingency on that bid? I want to say 77000 Let me check. Just looking at that. Uh, owner's contingency is 77000 and so is that guaranteed that it will not exceed that? Say that again? Is it guaranteed not to exceed the contingency? Uh, yes, ma'am. We had that at the Miller project. We had to go back. We had to do a change order and get more money for contingency because we expended the contingency amount. So the contingency fund is $77,000, which if just looking at this briefly, the total on that contract plus the contingency is still significantly below any of the other bids. Correct. Right? By Noble, correct. Right. So or does that mean that we should be expecting that the actual costs are going to come in closer to what the other bids are? No, we're we're expecting what they bid at seven point four eleven. Based on based on their bid proposal. It just strikes me as strange that all of the other contractors would be estimating it at a significantly higher cost. But they are certainly the cheapest, I might not say the lowest cost, excuse me. <laughs> But, a, but there's one at 8,000. So there is a, a range, and they are the lowest cost. Are we expect? Are we accepting? So there's several items on the agenda right now around this contract. Can I get some clarity about what this motion is specifically so versus the others? Good question. So this motion is to accept the rank as proposed, right? Just the rank. Correct. Okay. I move that we accept the rank as presented by district. Moved by Dr. Salmi, seconded by Ms. Viapondo, that we accept the rank. Any further questions? All in favor, please raise your hand. Six, zero opposed. Consideration possible action to approve a contract with contractor for the ACC building anticipated to be the new administration building, also known as the administration project. Correct. So again, this is more detailed motion in that we're accepting the contract um, that you have uh, that we would, if accepted, provide Noble for their signature. What was? What did you say at the end? Provide uh, what? 
if we're proposing that uh, that the board accept the contract uh, and recommendation is the administration recommends the approval of the contract with noble general contractors and authorize the superintendent to execute the contract so if approved tonight then we would reach out to noble they would collect it we would collect a signature from them and then dr cardo would make the final signature and th this is specifically for the asbestos abatement no, no ma'am this is specifically Sorry. for the general contract work okay. for the uh, central office the okay. next motion that you'll see is for the abatement okay so we're on the, the on contract. page on page 19 right we're on page 19 y'all are still looking at it okay so I have um, a couple of questions for me mr. Shanks so, um, from the bid that we the new bid the 7.4 mil how much different is that from the original bid when this was voted on what two years ago We roughly have, roughly we have in our budget 7.8 million set aside for that right and for this is all coming out of reserves correct it's coming out of what was um, what was budgeted. set and but sorry what Do I remember correctly that some of those funds from the general are also from the ESSER funds? Am I remembering that correctly? Okay, thank you. I don't think we could do a motion. Is anybody ready to motion? It's, yeah, I move that we approve the recommendation from the district to um, appoint, or select noble general contractors for the um, administrative building project. Second, do I hear a second? Second. Second motion made by Dr. Sami, second by Ms. Viapando. Any further questions or discussion? Um, I, do have a, I have a question. Oh, go ahead. Um, I have a, have a concern with, with spending roughly six million out of our general fund for um, the administration building when we could be using that money to directly impact instruction by hiring more teachers. Um, I personally, and I know this was approved before I was on, on the board, but moving forward, our schools are struggling. We've not addressed the lost time due to COVID that our, our students weren't in classrooms. And we could be using the 6.5 million to address and help our students um, and put this construction on the bond with the rest of the campus construction. Um, that That's my opinion, and I just kind of wanted to get my say and let the rest of y'all hear that. Ms. Halsey, you had your hand up. Yeah, so I, I will elaborate that I am concerned that it, by my by my addition, uh, figuring that this contract, you know, certainly looks great coming in lowest, but with the contingency, it's still nearly three quarters of a million dollars less than the next highest bid, which makes me very unsure that we're going to be able to keep the cost of this projected. Um, it seems that just seems not to really jive with my understanding of the way these things meet out in the end. So I think that this is the beginning of what we're going to be spending on this project. Um, and I, too, share... Um, my colleagues feeling that we should hold off and put this on up to the voters for a, an election. Just to be clear, this is already, the expenditure has already been voted on and approved by this board, correct? This, we've oh, already voted and approved it. Thank you, just wanted to make that clear. Uh, any, if there's no further questions or discussion, I'm calling for the vote. All in favor, raise your hand. One, two, three, four. Opposed? Two. Passes four to two. Next item. Um, 
consideration and possible action to select Construction Consulting Inc. to perform the asbestos abatement at the ACC building anticipated to be the new administration office and delegate authority to the superintendent to negotiate and execute a contract with the selected contractor. So this is actually the abatement of the asbestos problem at, at ACC and we put this third because we didn't know how the vote for the contractor was going to come out or the, the rankings that we approved. So this is a step we need in order to get the construction going. Uh, we, we bid it out. We're using a uh, job order contractor for this. We've met the procurement rules. Uh, we uh, took five bids in and uh, this one presented the best value for the, for the district. So it's about it's going to come in at about 108,000 to, and we had I think we budgeted about 150,000. So we're going to be under budget, but like I said, this is a step we need in order to get to uh, where we need with construction. Mr. Sandoval, does that 108,000 come out of the budget for the project itself? Yes, it comes out of that 7.8 million. Thank you. Ms. Halsey. Yeah, I just um, curious as to the experience that Noble. Uh, construction has in other school districts around the general area doing this kind of asbestos abatement. So you, we're going to go back to the to Noble because we're just talking about. I mean, they're the ones you're proposing to hire. No, so we have a different company that's going to do the asbestos. It's oh, I'm sorry, I missed that. Okay, yeah, so I'm who's sorry. doing it's that? Construction Consulting Three Incorporated is a different company that does asbestos abatement. So it's not part of the contract with with Noble. Okay. So it is or is not the part of the money that we just approved in the last vote? Well, so it, it's, it's like the 7.8 million, right? So we're going to get our, our FF and E out of it. Our furniture fixtures and equipment is going to come from that 7.8. Okay, so it's out of the 7.8, not come. out of the funds that we just, okay. I just been trying to make sure we are on the same page. Okay, but so the, the, the firm is, Construction this is what they do. They do asbestos abatement. They do asbestos abatement, okay. right. Thanks. I move that the school board approve the construction consulting three incorporated utilizing the TIPS contract uh, to <laughs> what number what? Two hundred two thousand one. <laughs> I think that that I said it right. Anyway, whatever that number is, and the contract for construction consulting three incorporated to provide the best of the I hear a second. A second. I have an additional question, Mr. Sandoval. It's my understanding that um, there's a Region 13 evaluator approved. Someone will come from Region 13 to oversee the asbestos abatement. Is that accurate? So the, the company that we use, we have a company in the district that manages all of our, our abatement, uh -huh. all of our asbestos reports, and they oversee this. But yes, they have to, there's somebody from the, from the state that has to come in and approve after it's been okay. done. Okay, thank you. Other questions? Ready for the vote? All in favor, please raise your hand. One, two, three, four, five, six. Zero opposed. It passes. Communication, discussion, and possible action for the approval of the resolution to consider designation of San Marcos CISD as District of Innovation. Ms. Halsey, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Ms. Cantu. Can I um, interrupt for just a minute? I just wanted to clarify. Ms. Halsey said that we had was talking that we had just approved a budget and I wanted to be clear we did not approve the budget that was presented to us we we approved the contractor that was presented to us is that correct the budget has been approved and okay I just wanted to clarify we that. approved the bid that's right yeah for that contractor yes the budget had previously been approved great just wanted to clarify ready good evening we'll give Bernie a break you're done Bernie relax <laughs> for the rest of the night <laughs> Good evening, Board of Trustees. So this is our final topic, uh, District of Innovation. I know we brought this a few years ago, uh, but wanted to bring it in front of the board. Uh, we discussed this with DEIC. Uh, they liked the recommendations. We talked to the principals. We talked to our assistant principals. So wanted to bring it for, um, for you to look it over. But just to be clear, this is just what we're looking for tonight is approval to begin the process. We're not approving it. We're not. You don't approve tonight and then we become a district of innovation. This is just the first step to starting the process. So just want to be clear with that. What the district of innovation is, it just creates more flexibility. Um, and so I can email a copy of this presentation, but I'll, I'll break it up as best as I can. District of innovation creates more 
flexibility. So there's a different, a variety of possible exemptions. So with District of Innovation, it's not just one blanketed thing. You can pick and choose what you want to explore. And so we're gonna choose four things. As you see, there's more than four options, but again, it's not a blanket application. You can pick and choose what you would like to apply for. The District of Innovation prohibited exemptions. These are the things we just absolutely cannot touch. We cannot touch you know, how the process is for Board of Trustees, uh, the duties of a school board superintendent, PEMS, criminal history records, curriculum and graduation requirements, bilingual education, special education. Again, these are just the list of things we just absolutely can't touch, even with the District of Innovation. So the four things we are going to explore. We, we try to make it simple, it's marketing, right? So it's four C's. Calendar, certifications, course credit, and college visits. And so the first thing is the first day of instruction. So by TEA, we cannot start school until the fourth Monday in August. And so that keeps getting later and later. So this, if we look at the calendar for next year, we wouldn't start school until August 28th. And we are the only district in Region 13 that is not a district of innovation. So for example, Hayes started a week and a half before us uh, this school year. The second thing is teacher certification. And I'll talk a little bit about that um, when I get to that slide. The third thing, minimum attendance for class credit or final grade, the 90% rule. And then the fourth, visits to accredited institutions of higher education, so college visits. Again, first day of instruction. Uh, I, I touched on that on the opening slide. We cannot start till the fourth Monday in August. Um, we want to start a little earlier and get more seat time. Teacher certification for dual credit and CTE instructors. So the district will have the flexibility to hire credential community college instructors or uni university professors in specific content areas to afford more students the opportunity to take dual credit courses if certified teachers are not available. This also affords the district the flexibility to hire professionals in certain trades or vocations to teach the crafts of those trades and vocations. So of course, we're heavy in CTE here at San Marcos High School. So if we have a veterinarian who has had their own business for the last 20 years, but doesn't have a teaching certification, well, we wanna have the ability to hire that person and come teach them the ins and outs of being a veterinarian. So that's one of the, that's one of the explorations that we're um, looking into. The third thing, minimum attendance for class credit or final grade. So an exemption from this require, requirement would mean that the district would not be required to penalize students who miss class due to extracurricular, academic activities, or other extenuating circumstances. So this exemption will allow the district to promote student engagement as well as social and emotional development by encouraging more students to participate in such activities and allow credit to be awarded based on content mastery instead of um, or instead of. In no way this limits or modifies a teacher's right to determine the final finality of a grade. So again, the teacher has the ability, the student has to earn the grade. You know, to sum it up, the student has to earn the grade, but this requires, or this will allow students to be, participate in UIL activities. And then the fourth thing is increasing college visits. So right now at San Marcos High School, uh, a junior is allowed two visits to a uh, college or university, and a senior is allowed two college visits. What we're exploring is the junior will have three college visits, and their senior year they also have another three college visits, and they won't be, uh, it won't be, it just gives them more opportunity to visit more colleges and universities. So those are the four things we are exploring as District of Innovation. And this is the timeline. I know we've been throwing, y'all been throwing a lot of timelines over these last few weeks with the bond. So tonight, it's the board adopting the resolution to begin the process. And then they approve the District of Innovation Committee. And what we're recommending is we already have a committee who does this type of work. And that is our DEIC, led by our academics department. So we would turn our DEIC into our District of Innovation Committee. The committee develops the plan. Um, on January 24th. And then on January 25th, the plan is posted on our district website. So through this application process, the plan has to be posted for 30 days on our district website. And we also have to welcome feedback 
from our community, our families, our students, our teachers, and anyone involved in San Marcos CISD. So that 30-day period, we've received feedback. On February 13th, the board votes to notify TEA of its intention to vote on the proposed plan. On February 28th, the DEIC holds a public meeting and votes on the final plan, and it has to be a majority vote by the DEIC slash District of Innovation Committee. And then on March 6th, we'll come back to you. Uh, the member of a DEIC or District of Innovation Committee will come to you, present the final plan, and then, of course, a majority has to be in favor of this to move forward from the school board. And that is our plan to become a district of innovation. This is the first step. And then this is, a, this is something that was put together by uh, members of our cabinet. So if there's a question I can't answer, they'll join me up here and get an answer for you. Uh, one of my questions, I remember someone saying we were the only Region 13 school that's district that's not in this designation? Okay, I just wanted to clarify. Thank yes, you. and so, for example, like Round Rock, they have two things. One is the calendar, and it's a, it's a certification so, of teachers. Okay, so we could pr pr propose all four and only have some number of them accepted? Is that? So it's totally up to the DEIC and the okay. District of Innovation Committee, right? So these were the four things that we felt as a cabinet were good to explore. Mm -hmm. um, the committee could choose one, they could choose two, they can choose three or four, okay. um, and then bring that back to the board. Any other questions? Ms. Halsey. Yes. Thank you for the clarification on this. I was not sure what it would include tonight. Mm -hmm. um, I have previously advocated for us taking this step, and I'm still in favor of it in general. Um, I have to say I find the criteria somewhat underwhelming, um, and I hope that I, we can challenge you all to think um, bigger about what innovation means and how we are actually using the potentials that are here to do some more mm -hmm. um, intentional innovation that will have bigger outcomes. Um, these seem like fine things to me. I have no problem moving the calendar back a week, but that doesn't seem to me like that is going to be the, the driver for the sort of change that we need to see with some of our students in some of our schools. Um, and the, subsequently, and honestly, like these all seem like kind of low fruit, right? I mean, I think in the past when we've had non-certified teachers that we wanted to make sure we're in the classrooms, they just come before the board and the board approves that and it moves on. And I don't think that there's a real problem with that process because honestly, as a board member, I'd like to kind of keep track on how many non-certified teachers that we have throughout the district. I don't think that that should be the norm, right? That should certainly be the exception. Um, in terms of the UIL ex, um, allowance for students to be not punished for participating, I wasn't aware that we were punishing students. I have, you know, students in my own household who have missed class time last week for UIL events and before, the, and, and so far I'm not, you know, when we've asked about the um, credit recovery and attendance recovery that they would need to participate in, we've been assured that that is not an issue. Correct. So I, I would be, I hope that we are not being punitive towards students who are being engaged and involved in activities. So I think that one seems also sort of moot. Mm -hmm. um, and I think the last one, I, I think that's great. I'm all for more college visits, certainly. Um, but before we take that as our big initiative for innovating, I think, again, we need to um, think about it more broadly um, and really look and see what the data is there. How many students do we currently have at their junior year who are going to colleges? What colleges are they going to? Do they need a half day pass? Do they need a full day pass? Are they doing follow up visits as seniors? And do we have the structures in place to ensure that those students are doing the follow ups before we just say that we're going to do it? Absolutely. No, good points. And so, one thing I do want to touch on is the calendar. It's not necessarily just moving the school of the first day of school up by a week or two weeks. What we do is we get to be more creative with the calendar itself. So for example, I think all of us in this room can attest to teachers need more planning time. And so with calendar options that we've created just to get a foundation is once a month, we are adding in a teacher planning day so that they can build better lessons throughout the week. And they're not doing it on a Friday night, Saturday night, Sunday. You know, we're, we're giving them that time during the school or during their contract hours. Um, so that's just one point, but no, definitely hear you. We want to take it back. We have a great group of uh, teachers, staff members on the DEIC, uh, so we're open to any feedback. But this was, was just laying the foundation um, and a starting point for us to become more innovative. 
No, I think that's great. And I think it's steps that we, you know, need to take quickly. Um, but I also, I, in the calendar, like I, what I would be interested in hearing from the committee is a proposal, which we have talked about and had said that we were piloting at some point, but I think that maybe that sort of got washed under with the pandemic, but doing a year round school for students, an opt in year round where we don't have the summer, where we start to address the summer lag, right? Like that seems to me the sort of innovative ideas that this law was put into place to facilitate and that actually can move needles and change lives in the ways that we need to change lives. Absolutely. So logistically, when this committee is convened, would they have the opportunity to, to present, to propose other things that are not included in the list that you've presented to us? Correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Um, I'd also like to ask that in the part of community engagement, which I think um, you have done a great job with Ms. Uh, Mr. Fernandez, I think that's been a, a great improvement in the district in the time I've been here, that we reach out to families through like a survey, kind of an, a, a sort, sort of a survey that, that you've used in the past. And Absolutely. I think that's the kind of feedback that we want to get, and that's the kind of engagement that we want to promote with our families in the district. So I would ask that we use something like that in this case as well, just to get feedback. Def no, we love this 30-day period where it's strictly feedback from the community and everyone involved. Uh, this is not something we want to build and we hope people like. We want to build what is being asked yeah. from teachers, from students, from families. Mr. Shanks? So what's the gotcha? <laughs> I mean, why wouldn't we do this? What is, is there, is there some requirement on the school district be, behalf that we have to maintain something or, mm -hmm. I, yeah, what's the gotcha? Because otherwise yeah. it's like a no brainer, so. No, that's a good question. So we have to be, as a district, we have to maintain a, a rating of C or better. Uh, if we do not maintain a C or better, we are not afforded the opportunity to become a district of innovation. Um, so really that's the only gotcha is maintain um, a good standing with TEA, make sure our test scores are, are proving to increase and stay above a C. Of course, we're going to always shoot for an A, um, but that's really the only gotcha is to maintain that okay. C or above. All right, thanks. Ms. Villapando? Uh, yes. Um, what would, what um, does it take, is it? going to take for our students to go and visit other uh, places, other universities or wherever they might want to go to school. Uh, we're fortunate to have Texas State here and that wouldn't be a problem, I understand that, but mm -hmm. uh, what about cost and traveling and all that kind of stuff? Yeah, I think our board and our superintendent have been very proactive when it, came, when it comes to college visits. Um, we've started, we start college visits at a very early age thanks to our AVID programs across the district. Uh, we've had students attend Harvard, MIT, and that's just to name a few. But even something as small as we had uh, what 3,000 students go to a Texas State women's basketball game last week, and that was second grade through fifth grade. And the time, how many times I heard someone say, "This is the first time I'm at Texas State," or "This is the first time I'm at a college basketball game." So just even that atmosphere of creating a college atmosphere for them, walking into a basketball game, it starts early. Um, so I don't think there's any limitations on getting our students to college and universities. Okay. I had the impression it was only for juniors and seniors. No, no, no. This is just to extend their, because um, right now you get an unexcused absence when you go to two college visits your junior year to your senior year. This is just give them one extra opportunity for an unexcused absence to go and visit a college university. The cost is up to them. Oh. Sorry, excuse absence. Excuse absence. <laughs> uh, uh, that's that's a that's good question. That it, it, involves. it doesn't involve the school paying for it. Yet. Correct. Correct. Thank yeah. you very much. Excuse absence. Are we ready for me to read the resolution? Yes, please. Whereas Education Code 12, 12A <laughs> dot, dot zero zero one provides that a district is eligible for designation as a district of innovation if the district's most recent performance rating under section 39.054 reflects at least acceptable performance and that consideration of designation as a district of innovation may be initiated by a resolution adopted by the board of trustees of the district and whereas the San Marcos Consolidated Independent School District's most recent performance rating under Education Code 39.054 reflects at least acceptable performance, now therefore be it resolved that the Board of Trustees of San Marcos Consolidated Independent School District, by adoption of this resolution, initiates the process under Education Code Chapter 12A to become a District of Innovation. 
be it further resolved that after this resolution is signed by the board, a public hearing shall be held within 30 days to consider whether the district should develop a local innovation plan for the designation of the district as a district of innovation and that within 30 days of, of the public hearing of the trustees of San Marcos Consolidated Independent School District will appoint an innovation plan committee to develop a local innovation plan or decline to pursue designation as a district of innovation adopted and if we vote on on it then we would write today's date do we need a do we need a motion yes i move to <coughs> adopt the resolution to consider designation as a district of innovation and allow the superintendent or designee to initiate the process under education code chapter 12a to become a district of innovation do i hear a second second it. mr shank second all in favor raise your hand six zero uh, District of Innovation will begin, the process will begin. Mr. Shanks. I move that we adjourn the meeting. Do I hear a second? Second from Dr. Sami. All in favor? It was Ms. Villopando. Yeah, it was Ms. Villopando. Oh. Oh, it's Ms. Rupondo. She said it. I, I, I raised her head. <laughs> <laughs> she raised her head.